The Book of Colossians The church in Colossae experienced a vast array of heretical attacks, such as secular philosophies, early Gnosticism, mystery religions, Judaism, mysticism, and worship of angels. These heresies tried to undermine the preeminence and sufficiency of Christ. The Apostles' Epistle to the Colossians represents the greatest Christological writing of the New Testament. Colossians places great emphasis on physical matter, intended to counter the mindset of Platonic philosophy and early Gnosticism. Words such as body, creation, blood, image, flesh, and firstborn are critical in understanding this epistle. Gnosticism, which was influenced by Platonic philosophy, saw the material universe, including the human body, as a mistaken creation of the demigods. They portrayed Christ as being the demigod, an emanation of the one, their god. Their claim was a direct attack on the deity of Christ. For them, the body was a prison for the soul. Resurrection, the return of the soul in a physical body, was viewed as complete nonsense. From a biblical perspective, the created universe and the human body, including the animals and plants, are the manifestation of the manifold infinite wisdom of God. This is why God chose to reveal himself in a human personality, which includes the human body. Mystery religions, prevalent in the first century, used secret initiation ceremonies. One of the key phrases in these religions was mystery and wisdom. So, mystery religions, false teachers, and Gnostic infiltrators claimed that Christians were incomplete and that they needed a special gnosis which belonged to their realm. For them, sin was ignorance of their enlightenment. They considered the souls of people as being of the same essence with the One, their God. So they claimed they were divine. This was another assault on Christ's deity. In light of these erroneous ideologies, Colossians proclaims Christ as the subject of God's supreme love. He provides redemption and forgiveness of sins through his blood, not by gnosis and initiation rituals. Also, he is the revealer of the invisible God, the embodied image of God, and fully divine, co-equal with the Father and the Holy Spirit. As creator of all things, he rules preeminent over creation, the church, and death. God is pleased that all fullness should dwell in his Son, and Christ brought peace with God by the blood of his cross. He became the reconciler of all things through the body of his flesh in death. Christ is the mystery of God made known to his saints, in opposition to the esoteric occult secrets of mystery religions. He lives in us and gives us certainty of eternal glory. Likewise, Christ is the source of maturity for the believers. In Christ is hidden all the wealth of wisdom and knowledge, so there is no true wisdom or spiritual knowledge outside of Him. The whole Trinity, in its fullness, dwells in the physical body of Christ. This is the true mystery. We are complete in Him. There is no need for initiation rituals, Sabbath-keeping, or special Gnostic knowledge. Christ's death and resurrection release the believer from the requirement of the law and shield the believer against demonic hierarchies. Christ is the fullness of the Old Testament feasts, including the Sabbath. He is also the head of the church, which nourishes the whole body of believers. Christ's death frees us from man-made religious regulations and constraints, and his resurrection places us at the right hand of God with him. As believers, our life is hidden with Christ in God. Fundamentally, Christ is our life, the source of sanctification from former behavior, and the supplier of Christian virtues. Application Our culture today attempts to convince us that we are not fulfilled and are incomplete in Christ. It employs a multi-pronged attack like in Colossae, pressing on us occultism, immorality, religious pluralism, mysticism, and philosophy. 
God grants us a formidable Christology in Colossians, meant to withstand any cleverness and aggression of contemporary culture and religions. We are responsible to adequately exegete Colossians in order to see Christ as the embodiment of the Trinity, in whom are hidden all treasures of wisdom and knowledge, which will suffice for us. Christ is preeminent over our circumstances, creation, death, and the Church.